SpaceX just revealed a new, weird nose comb that is unlike any other we've seen before. It belongs to Ship 26, however, it's quite clear that this nose cone doesn't look normal. As you can see, parts of Ship 26 are now bare of tiles and on standby at Starbase's ring yard for stacking. This seems to be holding true when previously reported Ship 26 and Ship 27 may be undergoing a radical change in plans, omitting thermal protection system tiles, and not installing aerodynamic flaps. But why is SpaceX making these changes? Well, frankly, the photo of Ship 26's nose cone without heat shield tiles reminds me of one of Starship's variations. Can you guess which one? That's right, it's the Starship Tanker. One of their earliest Starship versions needed to be a tanker for orbital refilling. Either way, with a reusable rocket like Starship, it takes almost all the fuel in the booster and the ship just to put something into orbit. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is the point. At that stage, there would be barely any propellant left. So, if it wants to go for longer trips, it will definitely have to refuel. But hey, guess what? The orbital refilling station doesn't need TPS tiles or flaps. That completely matches up with Ship 26's nose cone. Thus, is Ship 26, with the design changes, likely the pathfinder of Starship's tanker? The Starship tanker design can act as a high-capacity propellant depot and a powerful second stage that can help launch up to 240 tons of propellant into low Earth orbit. Musk also confirmed that they will definitely need more engines if we make the cargo bay all propellant, but it's probably smarter than a whole new shorter external hull. It may also serve as a temporary or permanent large capacity propellant storage and transfer system around Earth, making it possible for higher energy missions to launch into highly elliptical Earth orbit with a great deal more efficiency. For instance, this vehicle will play a key role in NASA's moon missions. In late April of 2021, the SpaceX Starship concept was selected as the single award winner for the Human Landing System Appendix H Option A contract. The SpaceX HLS concept leverages the development of their commercial Starship system, which consists of a Starship spacecraft and a super heavy booster. SpaceX intends to utilize three variants of the Starship concept to support returning humans to the surface of the moon in the Artemis 3 mission. The three Starship variants are the tanker to transport propellant, the storage depot to store the propellant in Earth orbit, and the HLS Starship that will travel to the moon. All three variants will be boosted to orbit by a super heavy booster first stage, which is 9 meters in diameter, 70 meters long, and is powered by 33 SpaceX Raptor engines. Under the proposed Artemis 3 HLS Starship mission architecture, the super heavy booster will first deliver a depot Starship to Earth orbit. This will be followed by several flights of tanker Starships, which will deliver mission critical methane and oxygen propellants to the depot. Once a sufficient load of propellant has been delivered to the depot, the Super Heavy Booster will carry the HLS Starship to orbit. The 50-meter-long HLS Starship will rendezvous with the orbiting depot and take on the propellants required to execute the lunar landing mission. Interestingly enough, not only will it be used in moon missions, but the Starship tanker will also be utilized around Mars to refill starships heading back to Earth or other planets in the solar system. The tanker can be sent to Mars in just two launches, land there, refuel using local resources, then launch back into low Martian orbit. But how exactly will this system of starships fuel one another? This is an image of how the starship will be refueled while going into space released by SpaceX back in 2019. However, it's been over two years since, and there have been a lot of changes to this plan. Last August, in an interview with Tim Dodd from Everyday Astronaut, I'm not but sure it'll be the butts, but it might be some of the might like the uh, we're actually we switched the propellants uh, full full drain lines uh, to be side to come okay. in from the side. And this idea is demonstrated in the animation that Starship has just provided. But it uh, looked a bit wrong. It is a fluid transfer. The ship would get to orbit with payload and then they would refuel in orbit to make sure they'll have enough propellant to get to the red planet. The strategy may be fantastic, but it's also risky. The butt-to-butt -butt method seems to be more simple because it could be assumed that the fluids flow downwards with a slight eulage push in one direction. With this plan, they don't have that same balance advantage, but Musk seems very confident in this option. He also revealed optimistically in the Starship update that the first test of orbital refilling 
could come towards the end of next year. Which brings us to our last question. How many launches will SpaceX need to refuel a Starship to the Moon and Mars? Back in 2021, the GAO happened to reveal that SpaceX proposed as many as 16 launches, including 14 refuelings spaced around 12 days apart for every Starship Moon Lander mission. But Musk responded that a need for 16 flights is extremely unlikely. Assuming each Starship tanker is able to deliver a full 150 tons of payload of propellant into orbit, Musk believes that it's unlikely to take more than 8 tanker launches to fill 1,200 ton tanks of Lunar Starship. Despite that, Musk himself didn't say how many refillings were expected to get to the moon in that update. Instead, he just said they would occur in quick succession. Every few hours, aspirationally. As for the mission to Mars, SpaceX has not yet announced the number of times it needs refueling. But the trip to Mars is about 480 million kilometers and takes about 7 months to fly. When comparing to the moon, it only takes 386,400 kilometers from Earth and it takes only about 3 days to land. So it'll be a sure thing that the company will need a lot of refueling when it gets to Mars. In short, Let's wait for some future announcements that Musk thinks we will be pretty fired up about. And as a piece of side info, SpaceX has officially ruled out the attempt to deploy Starlink satellites during Starship's debut orbital flight test. Previously, Starship SN24 featured a horizontal rectangle cargo door from where satellites could be deployed to orbit. The company even shared a video of how Starlink satellites could be deployed. All of this led many to think that SpaceX may attempt to deploy Starlink satellites during Starship's debut orbital flight test. However, this hope, this fire, has been extinguished. As spotted by Starship Gazer, a new cover was lifted up for the Starlink version 2 payload door. Later, he also spotted the door being welded on. The new cover is very thoroughly permanently welded all around the edges which suggests that there will be no deployment of any satellites on this vehicle even as a test. And with that, today's episode is finished. Thank you so much for watching, and if you enjoy what my team and I are doing, you can become a patron through our Patreon link in the description below. Otherwise, as always, this is Kevin with Great SpaceX, and my team and I will see you next time.